Hello everyone. Today's verse of the day is Matthew 26, 46 to 52. And this is talking about when Jesus was about to be taken up and captured to be crucified. While he was still speaking, Judas came, one of the twelve, and with him a great crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priest and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Seize him. And he came up to Jesus at once and said, Greetings, Rabbi. And he kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you came to do. Then they came up and laid hands on Jesus and seized him. And behold, one of those who were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew a sword and struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. Then Jesus said, Put your sword back in its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. If you, This is in Matthew, but if you read in, in Luke, it says, Luke twenty two fifty one, right after that, that disciple cut his ear, but Jesus said, no more of this, and he touched his ear and healed him. So Jesus actually healed his ear as well. What I want to say is make sure you don't cut people's ears off with the word of God. And when I say that, I'm saying that figuratively. As in cutting their ear off so they cannot hear you. Make sure you don't cut their ear off with the word of God so they cannot hear you and hear what you're trying to say. Make sure that you realize that when you use the word of God, it's a sword. It's sharper than a two-edged sword. And you don't want to just slice it without having the Holy Spirit leading you on to what to say and when to say. As Hebrews 4, 12 through 13 says, For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit. It cuts right to the heart. It is the truth right to the heart. It's keeping it real. Of joints and of marrow, discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Your thoughts and intentions. When you speak the word of God, it convicts. And you must do it in a way that doesn't just damage. And no creature is hidden from his sight, but all are naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. So the, the sword, the word of God is a sword. It's... When you look at the armor of God, they say the word of God is a sword. We must be careful on how we deliver it. You may see someone who is practicing certain things in, in their religion. And you just want to go, boom, right there. God says, don't bow down to idols. Don't make any graven image. I see you guys in Catholicism. Why do you make all these graven images of Mary, who is simply Jesus' mother, who says she needs a savior. You may want to go straight at them. There may be some, I don't know, with uh, Islam. And you're like, why would you follow a prophet Muhammad, who at 54 married a six-year-old named Aisha and consummated the marriage at nine? That man's a pedophile. You may want to go straight to the root cause. But the word of God is very sharp. And you put, put the ear back on. You only give what the Lord allows you to give. Because the biggest thing that keeps people away from accepting Yeshua Jesus is pride pride and what they need to see from you is love caring for them loving them telling them the truth but always tell the truth when the lord tells you to tell the truth in matthew four nineteen, it explains this it says and he said to them 
Jesus was talking to his disciples to his disciples follow me before they were his disciples follow me and I will make you fishers of men when you go out fishing you don't just boom throw dynamite in the water do you no you're patient you bake the thing you throw it out there and you let the fish come to it we bait it with our fruits of the spirit love joy peace long suffering truth and then we wait till the lord tells us to pull and to pull a little more and to pull a little more and to pull a little more and the next thing we know a soul has been saved we don't just throw dynamite in the water i remember i was talking to a a non-believer but then he knows my stance he knows i love science and he knows that i'll put up way <laughs> he knows i will i will prove to him that god exists just through science and this gentleman was talking to me personally and we have a gentleman we used to at our work who always would butt in and just tell people they're going to hell he said things such as if you have injuries then and you don't heal yourself then you're not a christian if you're not healing you're not a christian uh if you die of a sickness other than natural causes you're not sick uh, a christian and then he also said christians don't die he was very conflicting but i was talking to this gentleman the guy said, hey, Warren, you wouldn't believe it, man. I, <laughs> I was talking to this one guy and arguing with him about how evolution is right. And, man, you should have been there. I would whoop whooped him. I was like, well, if I was there, you definitely wouldn't have won the argument. And, and we started laughing, and then we started talking. And I started pointing things out. What's wrong with the evolution? Why it's a faith why it's a faith it's a religion just like my religion the only difference is people that believe in evolution think they came from nothing and that rock water and lightning eventually made information i believe that we came from something someone god and that he information provide the information and I was explaining this stuff to him, and we was very cordial about it. And here comes this fringe so-called believer coming in. Hey, Warren, what you talking about? And I was like, oh, man. I was like, oh, uh, we're, just, we're just talking about creation versus evolution. He's like, oh, okay, okay. Hey, Warren. I'm like, yes. You know he'll never hear you, right? I'm like, what? You know he'll never hear you. I'm like, please stop. He'll never hear you because he's stuck in his sins. And the person I was talking to immediately just started laughing. What my so-called fellow believer did was just cut off his ear he's scaring my fish away he's throwing dynamite into the lake it's not what we should do we be patient you only reveal something to what someone can take and i talked about this also in verse of day 115 check that out it explains more how you don't cast your goods before people who will stamp, trample them. You don't cast your pearls before people that will trample them. You give it to people who are ready when the Lord tells you. And that's what Jesus said. You give it to people when they're ready. Let him lead you. And if they don't hear you, dust your feet off from the town. 
But yeah, don't cut people's ears off with the word of God. Be careful with it and let God lead you. Dear Heavenly Father, just thank you for this day, Lord. And may many be saved and may we give a strong testimony, but always be careful on how we give it, Lord, so that we don't cut each other's ears off. That they can up accept the truth with our gentleness and respect. That is one of the biggest things you've told us to do. To be harmless as doves, but wise as serpents. In Yeshua's name, we pray. And Lord, we pray also for those in Israel, the explosions, the bombings, those in Gaza, the, the Arabs that are all under war, Lord. They're both, though both are souls. We fight not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities. May many be saved, Lord. Please keep them alive if they're not. In Yeshua's name, amen. Goodbye.